Yeah, g'day YouTubers, Tinker O'Toole again here with another video. Today we're going to talk about checking your uh, coil, should it fail on you. The first thing that happens is normally you can't start your chainsaw, or your chainsaw becomes very, very difficult to start. I changed this coil last week, this was out of an MS311, totally failed, just didn't even get any indication, just could not start it. This one was out of an MS380, but it slowly failed. So I suspect the uh, secondary windings or even maybe the primary windings maybe they uh, got a bit hot or something and maybe they vibrated and the, the lacquer come off and they shorted out a little bit and the ohms and resistance changed a little bit. But that can happen and it can still work. And it can gradually get worse and worse till it gets to the point you can't start. And which is what happened to me the other day, uh, refused to start. So first thing I did was pull the spark plug out, the spark plug was wet. Looked for a spark, not a spark. That was out in the field. So always take two chainsaws, never take one. So if you look up in the top left hand corner, this is what ignitions used to look like going back about 30 years ago. You had your coil. Your primary resistance back in those days was probably between 1 and 2 ohms. And you probably had about 2K on the secondary winding. So it was pretty easy to diagnose if the coil was faulty. And that was a matter of just changing the coil. Because they had a separate ignition, like the one that you see in the top uh, left-hand corner. That little module. So that was really good because then all you had to do was not buy a coil, buy a module, or vice versa. You just had to buy a coil and not a module. Then they started incorporating the module into the coil, which is what you got in all modern chainsaws for the last 20 years. So all those videos there, they're out on YouTube telling you, oh, yeah, no, check your, your, your primary uh, resistance, and it should be between 1 and 2 ohms. You get your multimeter out, and you've got 2 mega ohms. So, even if you could check the resistance of the coil, you can't check the transistor or the chip that's inside the coil unless you've got specialised equipment, and we don't have that. So, therefore, there's got to be an easier way. You don't want to take it down to your steel deal, he's going to charge you an arm and a leg. By the way, a coil in Australia, you go to a steel dealer, It'll cost you around about $180. Get one off eBay out of China, about $40. I brought one out of China, not a problem, not a problem at all. So, yeah. Okay, so how do we check the coil? This unit here, you'll see them on eBay. It's got a neon light in it. It's an inline tester. So I take the spark plug out, pop it in the spark plug hole like that. Get yourself an alligator clip. Clip it to the cylinder head, earth it. Just put it around here. Pop this end in here. Pull the handle, spark plugs out. Look at that. So this actually shows you it illuminates. Now, it tells you that you've got spark. What it doesn't tell you, even a little bit of a weak spark will light that up. This is another one, which looks like a spark plug, the gap. So I've gapped this, I've got a, a little knob here. I put a feeler gauge in there, the same as a spark plug. So you can vary this, and by varying this, making the gap bigger you can see when your spark refuses or when it refuses to spark with a large gap so there it is there and we'll get a nice little spark out of that And if you adjust it, you can get a stronger spark. And if you back it off the other way, 
you'll get to the stage where you've got no spark. Well, I've got a big spark then. So, that's what the unit does. And that's how I like to test if my coil is working. Because if your coil is working, you'll get a spark. No spark, it's not working. You don't know whether it's the primary winding shorting out. You don't know whether it's a secondary winding shorting out. Or you don't know whether it's the internal electronics embedded into that coil. Got no way of knowing whether the electronics are working or partially failing. The resistance, the capacitance can all change in that chip due through heat and vibration and it just doesn't work the way that it should and it can break down and it just doesn't work. It can either just break down and stop immediately or it can gradually reduce to the point where it doesn't work and that's even worse because that's what happened to this one on the MS380. Just got harder and harder to start. Carburetor is an interesting one as well because you can get similar problems through the carburetor. That's a different story. So, yeah, look, if you look, if you think that you've got a nice strong spark like that and the thing's not working properly, you've got your, ho and your low and your high setting screw, you can adjust those. If you still don't feel that it's running high RPM, I've pulled carbies apart and found sawdust and crap in them. Uh, especially where the diaphragm is. If the diaphragm gets a little crack in it, it won't pump fuel through there efficiently. So, or if that diaphragm becomes hardened, it doesn't work properly. So that's another thing. But yeah, this is on the coil. I've shown you, you can go out and buy one of these units. I like to have both of them because this one works really well. And I can tell that I've got electricity running through there and it illuminates it. This one gives me the variation that I can adjust uh, the gap. So let's just say it gives me a very weak spark and I reduce the gap and I can't get a stronger spark. Then I can turn around and say, oh, yeah, this, this ignition coil just is not working the way it should. So the resistance method was really good on the older style coils. Same as the car. The uh, earlier model cars that used to have points had a coil. And you could check the resistance on them as well. But they were filled with oil. Very, very rarely did they ever break down. Whereas the ones they've got these days, there's all these thin uh, copper windings in there. Uh, you've got epoxy resin that it's filled up with. And they still fail. Yeah, I've had two of them fail in the last two years uh, on my chainsaws. Both still chainsaws, so I wasn't happy about that. So definitely the coil uh, is, is, is a problem that can fail quite regularly. Happens a lot. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.